Okay, so we've got the uh, connector on here, and now we just need to get this wired up. And we only need um, the red is power, black is ground, and the white is the signal. So power can be taken. Now, in my case, I've taken off some of the solenoids for the uh, EGR system. And so there are two nice plugs here with power. Um, and so basically anywhere in the engine harness that you see a red and white, that's going to be power. And um, we're going to take it from one of these. So we're going to create a little um, spade connector that uh, slots into here. And we'll, we'll uh, wrap that down. And then uh, for ground, you, in this case, you could potentially use the ground that's on here. This is a ground switch solenoid, solenoid. And so since it's not switched anymore, it's going to be ground all the time. However, that ground may be slightly different, have different sort of um, uh, voltage feeds across it. So for ground, what you want to do instead is take it from the sensor ground, which is at the back of the intake manifold. And it's this little black strap right there. Um, that's where the EGR normally resides and is right here and so there's a little 10 millimeter nut holding that on and we're going to get a nice little um, small um, ring clamp to use as our ground crimp and um, we'll connect that wire in there and then the signal wire is going to go is going to follow our map line which we did right down here and It's going to follow the map line uh, down into the engine compartment and then connect to the mega squirt. All right, so here's that nut, uh, I mean that bolt that holds on the, um, the ground uh, for the uh, sensors. And I've got a little uh, quarter inch stud high temp ring and so that's going to be crimped on uh, to this ground. And we've got that extended and uh, soldered up, don't forget your heat shrink and then we've got this one is going to be our signal and that's going to feed into the cabin and then we've got this little guy it's a little spade connector um, this is actually for a molex uh, connector and which I is normally round but it's the right size and I just flattened it out and crimped it on so we're all set with that All right, well, that took a while. Um, so fed this down here through where the uh, uh, map hose goes and um, through the car. Got this to the power. Pull up my little lead right there. And then we got this guy bolted down right there to that ground stud. And then the green wire comes through the car, down through underneath that carpet and you can see it peeking out right there underneath there and it's going to connect into this orange lead that is still free but before we do that I'm going to start the car and actually do just check with my voltmeter that this is returning the right voltage it should be zero to five volts and um, that makes sure that I'm not going to damage the mega squirt in some way so and just in case something went wrong so let's try that all right, so I turned on, uh, key on, and I'm getting this percentage, which I don't think I trust. Um, so we're gonna check that out. I did check the power, ground, and everything. All that seems to be good. It's giving me a signal of um, about four volts. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is come up here to the uh, fuel settings. Uh, and go to fuel sensor settings and we're going to turn this to enabled it's a flex input should be if you wired it up the same way I did you can check out the uh, build guide and then um, in a GM sensor it should be this range so what it's going to do is send out a vol voltage but it's going to send it out on a particular frequency so 50 Hertz means that it's 0% ethanol and 150 should represent 100% um, ethanol. And what you can do 
if you don't have any ethanol in the car, um, you can change this fuel multiplier to be 100 and 100. This means that it won't do anything based on this information and also the timing to zero and zero. So it won't add fuel and it won't change timing based on the ethanol percentage because at this point you don't care. Um, you're not going to be cha actually changing the gas. You're just testing your sensor and making sure everything's okay. So you don't want your uh, engine to suddenly run rough or you know do weird things. So you can also turn on the temperature input. You can set that to the same input because the GM sensors also send a specific pulse width, which allows it to represent temperature on the same signal. So you can get that information as well, the fuel temperature, um, which could be um, useful and part of these calculations for the fueling. So once that's enabled, then with the key on, you should actually be getting a reading as long as there's gasoline and not air in the lines. And so we can uh, go through the process of adding a item to your dashboard real quick. All right, so to add to the dashboard, you can basically put it in design mode, um, select a particular sensor, and say, I want a new one, new gauge. And you could tell it what kind. I just did this type of thing. So then we can say done. And we can right click here and go to sensor inputs two, and then ethanol percentage. And that's gonna give me my gauge. So that's how I put that on the, on the thing. And then I just resized it to be wherever I wanted it and whatever. So that's, that's how you can get that representation on there. So why is it 16? That's pretty high for regular gas. Um, it should have just regular gas in there, which should be at most 10 percent so um i'll do some checking uh maybe the sensor is bad it looked it seemed like the connection all the connections was good the mega square is good it's reading something um just don't understand why it's uh high but anyway that basically uh completes the install and once i get it troubleshot um i'll figure out what the deal is and i can provide an update maybe i need a new sensor because this is uh it's a weird weird number Anyway, I'll find out what that is. All right, so I added, you'll see the, I added the fuel temp on there. I've been idling for a little while um, and it does seem to be increasing. It was at the uh, pretty much ambient temperature when I started. And um, also the ethanol number is looking pretty good. Um, I kind of messed with the connector. I think it's a janky connector. It's kind of what you get for getting like a nine dollar connector off of Amazon so I'm gonna replace that but um, it looks like it's working and um, that should basically do it all right a little uh, loom wrap on here and clean this thing up and we got it basically buttoned up so I'm gonna take it out for a little bit of street tuning All right, so back from street tuning, not too many changes here. Um, just a little line across the red line there. So that's good. That means that the required fuel calculation is working correctly. Um, when you change your injectors and you change the CCs, your required fuel calculation should, uh, you know, scale your table automatically behind the scenes. So you don't really have to do too much tuning. now. Idle is a little bit of a different story. It's still kind of fluctuating quite a bit, so I want to get that a little bit more steady again like it was, but other than that, that's all right. And then, um, it's funny, I just filled up with gas, so my uh, the temperature for the gas is lower now than it was. It was, you know, it was like 100 before, or 100 and something before, um, and then uh, the nice cool gas uh, for the pump has cooled it down substantially so um, that should do it <laughs>